Um, how does delaying ESA help anyone? It's something that you support in principle, and indeed the DUP is all for streamlining. That's exactly what she's done. Well, the introduction of ESA in its current form would be to no advantage, particularly to the control sector. And I think this is where this minister has missed completely the issue, as in most things. Why is there a delay in the introduction of ESA? We have a control sector which is going to be at the stroke of a pen, left out in the wilderness, and according to the department's own documentation, giving a voice. When currently that sector has a legislative framework through the representation of the transfers on the Board of Governors of Schools in the 86 order, and also on the Education and Library Boards through the 86 order. Now, if this minister thinks that I'm going to abandon the control sector for her ideological uh, desires, then she really is living in a completely and absolutely different world. Well, well, has she offered any compromise on that? We have been waiting for weeks and weeks. In fact, her department has known for over two years. The transferers, who I meet on a regular basis, have been very consistent on this issue. Papers have been submitted, suggestions have been made, but of course, in the belligerent way, as uh, Lord Morrow has rightly said, this minister doesn't want to deal with the issue. She talks good about equality and she lectures uh, myself and my colleagues about how we misrepresent and don't represent fairly the working class Protestant community. I'm elected from the working class Protestant community. I was educated in a controlled school. I'm proud of that. And if this minister thinks, or her department officials think, that somehow by a stroke of a pen come the 31st of December, we were going to throw out the legislative framework which currently gives a vo not only a voice but a, a place at the table in a decision-making body such as education and library boards to satisfy her ideological desires, then she really has missed the mark completely. So and that's why ESA, for one reason, is not going to come into existence well, on the 1st of uh, January. We're using a lot of uh, terminology here that some people may not fully understand, yeah. but effectively you're talking about the controlled sector, which would be the largely Protestant yes. uh, sector, uh, that there isn't uh, a legislative representation there given as of right to the transfers who would uh, traditionally have been members of the different Protestant yes. uh, churches. Uh, so what is the specific solution that you've asked uh, the Minister uh, to consider? Well, I think it, it's very unpalatable for this Minister, but uh, there is a way out of this. One was a suggestion which made whereby we retain a, a, a rump, a small proportion of each of the education and library boards. They collectively come together, make one new organisation, which then owns and also represents the control sector. That bypasses the current requirement for uh, equality proofing in terms of uh, this new body would have to be subject to Section 75, a non-departmental public body. Now, of course, that would open up the control sector to have on its representative body everybody else other or including those who have no real interest in or provide a service for the control sector. So you're talking about a mirror image of the CCMS? Exactly. Now, the which is the Catholic body? Yes. The only <clears> way that that can be accomplished then, and the minister rejected that months ago and said no, that wasn't the way she was going to go. The only way to get round that then is for this minister to seek a derogation from section 6 of the Northern Ireland Act, to go to the Westminster, the sovereign parliament in Westminster, get that derogation and then establish a body which provides for the control sector which educates somewhere in the region of 95% of Protestant children. Now the precedent has already been set here because remember we already have an opt-out by the maintained sector in regards to the Fair Employment Treatment Order, which allows maintained schools, Catholic schools, to use the Catholic certificate. And of course that's an issue which discriminates against uh, Protestant teachers having fair and equitable access to teach in maintained schools. What about the argument, say, from the integrated sector that might come, uh, that would be, well, why not remove uh, any preferential treatment to, to either religion? Well, the situation is that we have to have a level playing field, but the reality is, where we are currently at, we have a sector which has, in the maintained sector, a very strong and a very protected legislative process. That's, of course, the reason why the Minister was unable or unwilling today to actually outline to us what her proposals are for CCMS. Now, of course, we, say, we know that she has problems in dealing with that sector because the current chief executive of CCMS has, according to his own statement recently, instructed his officials not to further engage with ESA. Now, given the uh, diktat that has been given today by the minister, where she's going to establish these converging plans, how is that sector going to engage with ESA 
whenever we have uh, the chief executive saying he's not going to allow his staff to actually implement that. But isn't the reality that you have failed to stop this minister? She's proceeding, she's carrying on regardless. No. The, you see, the minister went to the Association of Education Library Boards and she said it was not desirable or practical to reconstitute the Education Library Boards. But the one thing, the one uh, line she left out is legal. Legally, this is all, she only c could do this, but what she has done under the power that she has is under the 86 order, the department may by, uh, on occasions reduce the numbers. So all she has done is, is reduce the numbers. Now, of course, there are issues there that we are going to look at this afternoon, which I believe she has gone beyond what is her legal competency in regards to this. But legally, the boards are still in place as of the 1st of January. Well, what is your next move then? Are you talking about a court challenge if you think that she's acting illegally? Well, we have to consider all our options and as I do with this minister repeatedly, you just don't take what she says. You have to look under the stone because you can be assured this minister is now, I believe, trying to threaten the education library boards in regards to their financial delegation, their budget. Now, we've seen that before. We have seen... Uh, we well, know she, just, yeah, we're just on that point. We have one board which was abolished, run by uh, commissioners because it wasn't seen to be doing its job yes. properly. Could she uh, invoke that power to get rid of other boards? She could if the boards didn't uh, decide to agree with what the edict was from the department. And of course, here we have two other characters that have now been brought into play here, who have now become the gurus of the Department of Education, Gavin Boyd who at one time was described as the chief executive designate, then he becomes the interim chief executive, and now we are told this morning he is de facto chief executive. So we have all these, and he has been appointed in this role within the Department of Education, and also the uh, chairman of a board that doesn't even exist. And remember, the education bill, uh, in terms of the numbers of the board, hasn't even been agreed, but yet we have this a aloof person who's been appointed to a board that doesn't exist, who's going to have power and the Education Library Board's accounting officers are going to have to report back through Gavin Boyd and uh, Sean Hogan back to the department. Now, the thing that really does become uh, an irritant about this minister is that she continually persists in going, she talks about the path of convergence. Convergence to what? We are not on the path of convergence to establishing a bill that removes any of the rights to the schools which are under the control sector, nor brings into play an organisation which is so bureaucratic that it has all the power in the centre and no responsibility so, to schools. When she describes these as interim uh, measures, how interim do you think they'll end up being? Well, it was interesting that the Minister said whether it's three months or three years, I wonder is she going off the idea of urgency? Because remember, she told us repeatedly Time and time again over the last number of weeks, the deadline of the 31st will be met. We have no, there's no other, there's no plan B, there's no other options. And then all of a sudden she goes into the house today and she talks about, well, it's either three months or three years. Well, I don't care how long it takes, but I can assure you that as far as I and my party are concerned, that the issues which are fundamental to resolving the problems will be addressed. And if they're not addressed, the education library boards will remain and we will still be considering what is the uh, encroaching power of a shadowy body within the Department of Education that's trying to suck the life out of the education library boards to build a power base for an organisation that legally doesn't exist. But doesn't your party have to take some responsibility? It would appear that the DUP uh, uh, is incapable of compromising with Katrina Rowan to achieve uh, moving forward in education, whether it's the Education Skills Authority or it is the selection process. I mean, is there any middle ground? Is there any way that you and this minister can work something out? Well, given the fact that we gave uh, suggestions and ideas to the uh, Sinn Féin and to the department months ago and we're still waiting on a response and when you ask when's the response coming you have a, a vacant look upon the faces of those that you ask. The issue of compromise can only be on the basis of uh, if there is an agreed way to find a way forward and given the situation that we are in I don't believe that this minute in time this minister is capable of bringing any consensus to the table on any issue because whether it's the special education needs review, she made it problematic. Whether it's the issue of transfer, it became problematic. And the person at the heart of all of this is not the DUP, but Sinn Féin Minister. Well, she would probably say it takes two. It takes two, but there has been an attempt by us. It's funny that we have had other parties in this building over the last number of weeks who have been working towards trying to get a consensus and those talks haven't broken down and one of the reasons probably why they haven't broken down is that the element that's not in the room is Sinn Féin and obviously that tells you where consensus can be, can be got. 